first thing on this section is that you need to memorize a standard form quadratic trinomial, all right? Now, the word form, it just means the way an equation looks. We've learned many forms before in math. We've learned slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. We've learned uh, point-slope form. Um, we have standard form right here. So remember, a, b, and c are just numbers, right? However, if a ends up being 0, then 0 times anything is 0. You wouldn't have a quadratic anymore. Then it would just be a regular equation, y equals mx plus b, right? So uh, a is just a number. It could be a fraction. could be a decimal. could be positive or negative. Um, it's just the form, and we need to memorize it. ax squared plus bx plus c, y is by itself. Now, when you take this form and have some numbers in a, b, and c, what you end up with is a u-shaped curve. And that U-shaped curve is called a parabola. The most simple parabola would be the function y equals x squared. We've already uh, graphed y equals x squared before. Um, let's graph it one more time. So go ahead and do a quick x, y table right there and put those values in for the inputs on x. You want the uh, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And go ahead and draw a little box right here around the 1, 2, 3. We're going to use that later. Uh, so if you're at home watching this, hit pause, do that, and we're going to move right along here. Um, again, the input values are the x values, and we're simply going to plug them into the function machine that we see up here. So if I plug in negative 3 into here, now remember, when you plug in negative 3 into x, it's going to go in parentheses. It's very important that we think about it inside parentheses. I'm only going to show my work for this first one. So when I say y equals x squared, I'm really saying y equals negative 3 squared. And when I say negative 3 squared, I end up with a positive 9, right? When I plug in negative 2, negative 2 squared is positive 4. When I plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is positive 1. When I plug in 0, 0 squared is 0. When I plug in 1, I get out of 1 because 1 squared is 1. When I plug in a 2, 2 squared is 4. When I plug in a 3, 3 squared is 9. And ladies and gentlemen, all of these guys are coordinates. So you could put parentheses around all of them if you want. Um, bottom line is we need to graph these to get our graph, to get our, our parabola. So if we go to the uh, negative 3, 9, actually, I'm not going to waste time on the video graphing them. I'm just going to plot them on hit pause and plot them. So we have those coordinates plotted. And as you can see, we end up with the U-shaped curve. And you can put arrows because they continue forever. <clears throat> now, you could also notice that they're perfectly symmetrical. Now, what does that mean? That if you were to draw a line right down through this lowest point, the minimum point, draw a line right down through it, you could see that these two points reflect perfectly over that. This is called the axis of symmetry. So these two points reflect perfectly over. They reflect perfectly over. Kind of like if this were a mirror, it would reflect perfectly over onto that other side. Uh, what does that really mean? That this point right here is one, two, three units away from the axis of symmetry, which means that this one over here has to also be one, two, three units away from the axis of symmetry. This one is two units away from the axis of symmetry. This one's two units away from the axis of symmetry. Um, so we're just talking about this uh, parent graph parabola. This is the minimum point because it's the lowest point. Right now, when we say highest or lowest point, we're really talking about the y values. Y values is uh, the values that are running up and down. So a point up here is higher than a point right here. A point right here is higher than a point down here, or this point down here is lower. So when you're talking about uh, higher or lower maximum or minimum values, you're really talking about the y value. So if I ask you, what is the minimum value of this parabola? You could give me the vertex, which is 0, 0, or you could simply say that your minimum value is y equals 0. Either one is fine, because the minimum value would be this lowest value of y. Okay, so you could give me the vertex, which would be the coordinate 0, 0. That's also the minimum value. Or you could just say y is 0 because that's your lowest y value. Okay, um, let's move on, and we're going to come back to this 
boxed uh, coordinates in a little while. If you read along, as you can see, when you plug in negative numbers, you still end up with positive answers because when you square a negative, you still get a positive answer. Vertex, I've been talking about vertex. Here's a definition. The vertex is a coordinate. It's either the highest point or the lowest point of your parabola, depending on whether it opens up or down. This is very important. Please uh, highlight this, box it in, circle it. I don't know, <clears throat> but make sure you know this. The A value, and that's we're talking about the number that's out in front. If the number out in front is positive, the U-shaped curve will open up. If it's negative, it's going to open down. Now, what A value am I talking about? If you go back to your standard form way up here, the A value that's in front, if it's positive, your parabola is going to open up. If it's negative, your parabola is going to open down. Okay? Now, that in turn tells you other things. If your A value is positive, it opens up. That means that you're going to have a maximum value or a minimum value. What do you guys think? If it's opening up, do you have a maximum value or a minimum value? Minimum. Check it out. Look, at, I'm still doing the same parabola that's opening up. Look, it's way up here. It goes down, it goes down. Just keep going down. Then it reaches some minimum point, and then it comes back up, right? So when it opens up, it has a minimum value. When it opens down, when it opens down, does it have a minimum or maximum value? Maximum, right? You throw a ball up in the air, it's going to reach a max height, and then it's going to come back down. So the A value tells you if it opens up, tells you if it opens down, and it also tells you if you have a maximum or minimum based on that fact if it's opening up or down. Again, if the A value is positive, it opens up. If the A value is negative, it opens down. Okay, hopefully we got that down. Let's go back to our notes down here. Um, and that's exactly what I explain on this next portion. If it opens up, then you're going to have a minimum value. Maybe we could even do a little sketch right here. If it opens up, then for sure you're going to have this point, which is a minimum value. If it opens down, then for sure you're going to have a, a maximum value, right? Now here's something that we also need to memorize. <clears throat> this is what you need for the vertex formula, okay? X equals negative B over 2A. You have to memorize this. It's kind of like uh, the slope formula back when we were graphing lines. Right, the, So right here, you need to memorize x equals negative b over 2a. And notice that it says x equals. Now, we just said that a vertex was a coordinate. And a coordinate has both an x and a y value. But this is only going to give you the x value. Okay, So it's only going to give you this number. Now, whenever you do have an x value and you want to solve for a y value, what do we do? You plug it in and solve. Right? So... Using this, you're going to be able to find your x, and once you have your x, you can plug it into your original equation to solve for y. Now, if you're thinking, what the heck, negative b, 2a, it's, it's really easy. The negative b and the 2a, it's just talking about whatever numbers you have right here for b and a. So, like, let's say you have a 4 right here and a 1 right here. So, it would be negative b, it'd be negative 4 over 2 times 1. And then you work that out, and that gives you your x value. We're going to, of course, go through some examples right now, but I hope that we understand a vertex, the highest or lowest point of a parabola, the most important point of a parabola. Not only is it the highest point or the lowest point, but it's also that point that tells you your axis of symmetry, the reflection line that goes right through it. Okay? Um, so the vertex is a coordinate. It's an x and y value, and you can find your x value by having this formula memorized. Okay? And once you get that value, you plug it in to find y. Let's go through some examples up here. And that's exactly what I, what I said right now. is just explained right here. Um, axis of symmetry. We've already talked about what the axis of symmetry is. It's like that mirror. It's the reflection point or the reflection line. And it says right here, through any vertex exists an imaginary vertical line that divides it perfectly in half. That line's called the axis of symmetry, right? We already drew that over here on our example. I did it dotted right here. That red dotted line, that's the axis of symmetry. And notice that it goes right through the vertex. So through any vertex, you could draw your axis of symmetry. By the way, sorry, I'm moving this around a lot. Um, what kind of line is the axis of symmetry? Is it vertical or horizontal? It's vertical, correct? 
Now, we all should know from the previous graphing sections that any vertical line, like, let me ask you this. Over here, this is at the x value of negative 9. Now, what if I drew a vertical line right through that? What would be the coordinate of that vertical line? I mean, not the coordinate. What would be the equation of that vertical line? Would it be y equals something? y equals mx plus b? No, it doesn't work. What's the equation of that vertical line? It would be x equals negative 9. That's the equation of this vertical line that you see right here. Agree? Only one person agrees with me? Do we agree? Mm -hmm. All right. So any vertical line is going to have x equals a number. You guys agree with that? Okay. So if we know that the axis of symmetry has to be vertical, then you know that it has to be x equals a number. And ladies and gentlemen, that formula that we used for the x value of the vertex, it's the same formula for the axis of symmetry. Okay. In other words, the equation of your axis of symmetry is really the x value of your vertex. So like, let's say you, you use this formula to find your x value of your vertex. Let's say your vertex is an x and y coordinate, x and y value. And let's say you worked out the math and you got your x value is 3. How do you find the y value? You plug in 3, correct? Now, let's say they asked you for the actual equation of the axis of symmetry. All you're going to do is say x equals 3. Does that make sense? That's your equation for the axis of symmetry. Um, let's move on. So what are the steps to graphing quadratics in standard form? Number one, find the vertex using x equals negative b over 2a. We already know that. Um, and then plug it into x, into the equation, to solve for y. And you'll get your nice vertex coordinate. Uh, step two, draw your axis of symmetry. It's just draw a, a vertical line right through that uh, vertex. And step three, plug in two numbers on the same side of the axis of symmetry. And you could use an xy table for that. And we might as well write this down. On uh, number three, let's write down like a, a quick xy table. So we'll know that on number three, we need to use an xy table, okay? And number four, draw the parabola after you reflect them over to the other side. So let's try to follow these steps in the next four, three minutes right here that I have left on this video to graph this first one, okay? So step one is to find the vertex. Okay, so let's find the vertex of this equation. Now, we know that the vertex is a coordinate, an x value and a y value. How am I going to find that x value using the formula x equals negative b over 2a? Okay, so there's the formula x equals negative b over 2a. And the best way to do this is to replace the b and the a with parentheses and then plug in your values. I have the parentheses right there. And now I'm just going to look for my b value. My b value is what? Six. Wake up, guys. You ate too much candy last night having a sugar crash, huh? Uh, so six is our B value. So I'm going to plug in six. And the A value is what? Negative three. Negative three. So when I work this out, guys, I have a negative six up on top. What do I end up with on the bottom? Negative six on top, negative six on the bottom. What's my answer? One. So this answer is really one. But what, what did we just find? We found x, exactly. This formula says x equals. So I'm going to take that and put the, the 1 right there. That's my x value of my vertex. I still need y, so I need to plug it back into the original equation right here. So what I'm going to do is replace the x's with parentheses. And there's my equation with parentheses. Let me plug a 1 into each of those parentheses. And now let's work this out. Uh, when I look at this first one, negative 3 times 1 squared, you do the 1 squared first, that's really negative 3 times 1, that's still negative 3. Now when I look at this one, that's uh, 6 times 1 is 6, so I have negative 3 plus 6, and I might as well do this, negative 3 plus 6 is 3, and then at the very end, 3 plus 5 is 8. So my final y value is 8, that's my uh, vertex y value. So my vertex is 1, 8, let me go to the graph and put that in. There's the vertex 1, 8. Let me draw an axis of symmetry. Now I just need some points on the same side of the axis of symmetry using an xy table. And I'm actually going to stop right here and continue this on the next video uh, because we ran out of time. I apologize. I'm sorry.